I'll tell you what, based on the symptoms that this thing had, how many people would have suggested uh, plugs, wires, cap, and rotor? Would not have fixed it. We're going to use the ignition module out of the distributor that was already in Jake's car. So I'm swapping out the module. We're just going to use the pickup coils, and I'm hoping that they're in good shape. Um, you know, if some of you are thinking we'll do a resistance measurement of the pickup coil, and we can do that. The problem with resistance measurements of pickup coils is it doesn't tell you the whole story. It only tells you the the winding um, condition and nothing about the magnet uh, or the motion for that matter. Okay, ignition module and then I want to swap out this capacitor that's broken. I know some of you are maybe thinking that why don't I just get a, a new distributor, stop being so cheap, and honestly this isn't a, even about that. This is about getting a car back on the road now, not days from now, because th these are parts on this 94, or I think it's a 94 Celica, I mean these are parts that need to be ordered now, they're not in stock. And then the other thing too is why not fix it for free if I can, right? Capacitor. Oh, I stabbed my finger. That <laughs> scared me. Plastic piece broke. <laughs> Such good audio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bleeding. <laughs> this piece that I'm bolting in right now, Caleb, is the ignition module. That's what would do the control of the ignition coil based on signals that the engine computer gives it. I'll tell you what based on the symptoms that this thing had, how many people would have suggested uh, plugs, wires, cap, and rotor? Would not have fixed it. That's such an odd like, fault. It is an odd fault. And the thing is, is, is it really wasn't causing mistriggering on the primary side. I mean, not from what I saw. Maybe if we would have done some primary analysis, we would have sun seen some of them dropping out, but I really don't think so. I, I think that that pickup coil winding was still in enough, in, in enough decent of shape to produce a signal. I still don't see where it, where it came from. I mean, did somebody... I mean, that's absolutely pickup coil winding. Oh, that's why it was running. What's that? So it, it came out of here. Out of? It came out of this one. Out of that? Yeah, I only needed to change that one. That's okay. This oil seal was leaking. This one's dry. So it came out. Yeah, look. I'll show you where, where to put the camera. It can't See the center part of this right here? Look what's missing on this one. The winding's gone. Right here. Show me on the other one again. Right. See the brown part? That's yeah, that's the cover. On it. That's the the cover that holds the um, the winding goes around the magnet. So inside of that, there's a magnet right there in the center, just like this one. That's the magnet right there in the center. Mm -hmm. Look, the brown part's missing, and, missing. and all the winding is gone. So it's the cam sensor signal that was missing. That's why the car was still able to run. Uh, basically, the injection timing on this uh, for sequential injection would have been off. 
Uh, clearly this car can run without the single pulse cam signal. The four pulse per rotation, I don't know if you see those teeth down here. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's four of those per rotation. That's what gives you your piston position and RPM. That's why the car was still able to run, and it was this signal, the cam pulse. I'd have to read the description operation, but that's going to be used for number one injection, and um, uh, the computer can fire then in, in firing order sequence. Without that signal, clearly the car was still able to run in, in a default strategy with the injectors, whether it pair or group fired them, I'm not sure, but that's where it came from. It came from that, not from down below. And we could have just changed this, but I'm comfortable changing the whole thing because this is the oil seal at the bottom. I don't know if you can get a shot of the, of the oil that's the shininess. You get it? Yeah, I have it in the shot. I don't know if you can really tell. All right, well, let's take compare the two and look at, look at this one. Look how dry that is. Okay? Yeah, I'll get it before and after. Okay. Me. Cool. Now let's put this coil back in. And Jake had a check engine light on, too. And I ignored it because he's had an EGR temp sensor fault forever. And the EGR temperature sensor for this car is about $180 when I priced it. Nobody has one. And uh, I'm just not changing it. I don't care. Check engine light can stay on. So anyway, we ignored the check engine light. But the thing about that is that would just come and go. And uh, that's not what we had going on here this time. It was one that um, the check engine light came on immediately. And that's going to be because of this cam fault. Now if I would have you know, checked it for codes, we would have had a cam sensor code. I did not. Good other. Sorry. That's original. What? So that was original. That's my Work is done alarm by 455. Work is not done. I know, it's not done, but... <laughs> Sorry. I have tape over the clock on my monitor. Yeah. So I don't know when it's 455. Oh, nice. So my phone plays bad to the bone. <laughs> Dude. Come the on. plastic's so brittle. I mean, there's. I don't really have a choice. That's just gonna happen. It's You're gonna just gonna stab your hand. I'm telling you, it's coming. Oh, this whole connector's broken. No. No. Well, let's go out to the car. Let's hope this works. I mean, this this connector's broken, but I'll be able to zip tie it if I have to. Yeah. I'm not gonna change it because there's still a locking tab on this side. Yeah. This gasket's like garbage here, man. Only, these are easy because it really legit only goes one way. Now the only downside of this is going to be that O-ring and how hard is that O-ring. That's pretty stiff. I hope we don't have an oil leak here when we're done. I've d left the distributor loose so I can turn it, which we need to once we run the car because we have to set our base ignition timing, which Caleb has never seen me do before. What are you spraying on it? Spray adhesive. Yeah, it's like peeing in the morning after sex. All this seal really does is, I mean, it's a pretty important seal. It keeps the water out of the, out of the distributor cap whenever you're you know, going down the highway in a lot of rain, you know? Mm -hmm. So, this should work. Where's my rotor at? Remember I was worried about that burn mark in the rotor? Oh, yeah. I don't like it at all. What, what other option do you have? I'll check it real quick, but we're running out of daylight, so we're going to base this off of how it runs. Sometimes you can have white spots that are not a problem. We'll find out here real quick. 
right if we have any issues there with any misfiring then we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there today is not the day I'm going to show you the rotor trick all you really need to do you run a jumper wire from the coil to the end of that then you use your test light on the bottom side to see if it arcs through it cool. while you're cranking the engine over we almost done Caleb we just got to time it as long as we don't have a misfire if we have a misfire we gotta work a little harder but it probably maybe be one that we end today on on this because if I still have a miss then I gotta maybe break out the the big guns just so everyone can see why mm -hmm. and we're not huddled around this little screen I love the u-scope don't get me wrong but for video edit for video purposes it's yeah. why you guys never see it it just doesn't provide as nice of a picture as us having a screen recording going on the Varus yeah, or on my laptop you know with the Pico either one I just hope this this pickup coil in this distributor is okay I mean because that can cause a misfire too and we're remember this distributor had an issue and I don't know what the issue was. I was just being a parts changer. I had a distributor, I had a distributor code and I just swapped the distributor out and it fixed the problem. Yeah. And that was whenever this engine was replaced. And this is the distributor that was given the issue. However, I just swapped out the ignition coil and the ignition module from the working one Although the ignition coil was originally in this one. So I don't know, we'll see. I have a feeling that we may have a pickup coil issue in this one. If we do, it just makes for a better video for you guys. Because I know a lot of you were thinking, man, you should have checked the resistance of that pickup coil. You're not wrong. It is a test that can be done. I just don't don't find much value in it starting it up I think it'll be a little bit loud with the air cleaner off no big deal this is a non mass airflow engine this is a speed density engine we'll be fine check engine lights off too which is good So sweet sweet now I gotta go get my timing light I gotta go dust off my timing light I should say and uh, we gotta set the timing right on this Caleb will like this part so our timing is gonna be um, 10 degrees before top dead center with the it says short circuited at idling so that'd be those two um, I think it's the T E1 and E1, I believe. Yeah, TE1 is the middle, and then E1 is that guy. So that one and that one. Right? Yeah. And all we need is a paper clip for that. Um, I'm going to go grab my timing light. Caleb, can you go in the house and get me a paper clip? All right, so uh, I believe my timing light is at my brother's shop. So we're going to go take a ride over there. I'm just going to, I just lined this up where I thought it was. And, uh, we're just gonna drive. We're just gonna drive to his shop, do it there real quick. So uh, you know, we could. A lot of people set timing by ear. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not doing that. We're gonna set this right. I know you guys were watching. Forgot the cover. We'll put this back on when we get to my brother's shop. So I just got on the phone with my brother. We're on our way to his shop. He's not there. The one day he leaves early. <laughs> He's here I mean, until like 10 o'clock every night. Yeah, well, it's new business, so that's what happens. But, uh, well, new business for him. Same garage he's worked at for 25 years, but he bought it. It's his shop now. But anyway, it's good that he's home. I'm glad. But we're going to have to pick this up tomorrow with you guys at my brother's shop. So we'll see you tomorrow. Take two. Going to Danner's work. Before I forget, I wanted to talk about my initial 
thoughts through this process where I said weak spark was the was the um, culprit and um, I still believe that that's legit for what we were what we were seeing my assumptions of the weak coil were incorrect but the weak spark part of it uh, I think was confirmed and what was happening again was the pickup coil for the single pulse which is your cam sensor which is for you used for injection sequencing um, that got wrapped around the distributor shaft and little pieces of that copper got inside the distributor cap and as the rotor was distributing the spark there were times where it was not distributing the spark a where it was supposed to go um, and B, there were times maybe that it was split between a path um, with the copper wire and um, the normal path on that part of the distributor cap. We saw the cylinder number three had real, real weak spark at one point in time, and then it went away. Um, but I think this all matches the fact that my son could no longer drive it after he put dielectric grease in the boots it just didn't help it's an insulator we had a spark issue we had a spark leakage issue our misfires i said when we were driving it were secondary related they felt secondary related they were with the lower pickup coil still being intact which is the one that's used for spark control um, we would not have lost anything on the primary so even if we would have put a amp clamp on the primary side of the ignition system we would not have seen dropouts in in those signals it was only on the secondary side and then also viewing think about this viewing the secondary ignition where we were which was from the plug wires um, was giving us some readings that you know weren't all that great it just looked like mist triggering uh, it looked like a scope setup problem um, where we didn't have well-defined firing and spark lines sometimes uh, they, they look good and other times they didn't they look kind of shallow on the screen and then of course when we saw that number three with like no spark line um, we can clearly see a secondary problem but that's the difficult part when the issue is inside of the cap and rotor because when you're on a plug wire you're after that event and so it's a real good lesson on why you want to be as close to an ignition coil as possible when you're doing secondary measurements is because of that so the picture you got your coil say this hand and then it travels into the rotor the cap then it gets distributed and then comes out and so we're way over here on this hand over with our adapter and the problem is in the middle does that make sense caleb where you're you're not exactly seeing that problem the way that it's really presenting itself because you're not on the coil side and then when we switched to the coil side um, we had much better pictures and we could see on some of those snap throttle tests we could see the real real high frequency hash in the spark lines um, that were an indication of that spark not firing inside the combustion chamber and so th those those all are all lessons to be learned when you're doing secondary ignition analysis and it's important to be as close to the coil as possible in our case as close to the distributor cap as possible and it not having a coil wire um, I, I didn't uh, initially choose to clip over the cap itself and sometimes those can give you um, sketchy readings you know secondary ignition is not is not a perfect science <laughs> don't film them yet <laughs> <laughs> I got some new scanner dinner merch for you. <laughs> yes. When, when it snows outside and it's raining on the inside, <laughs> when yeah. it melts, my yeah. wife's gag gift to us. That is awesome. That kind of reminds me of a dog collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the cone of shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the still image of that? Caleb was on, you see Caleb's face, he's like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I, th I think I left my timing light here, Danner. I, I don't even, I couldn't find it. I have a few of them. 
I don't even remember how to time a car. Oh. Yeah, shot on my butt. It's probably not good. Yeah, Let me borrow a timing light, Danner. I can't find mine. On the wall. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see that. It's the same one I used to have. I need a paper clip too. You got a paper clip? Yeah. Sweet. Thank you, sir. All right, Caleb. Remember what two pins we jump? Yep. The TE1 and the E1 and the reason I just dropped that paper clip. I'm going to. The reason I would know that is working on a lot of pre-OBD2 Toyotas back in the day. Those were the same two pins that you jump to get flash codes out of the system. So you jump those two pins together, turn the key on, check engine light flashes at you, count the number, that's your code. You guys with only working on today's cars, you don't know how good you have it. It was much more challenging in the early days than it is nowadays. Sure, we have different types of problems on today's cars, but man, you guys have no idea what we had to deal with. Dude, this paper clip's like super fat. The pH? No, yeah, no, fat as in, thick. yeah. I don't really like to spread terminals. That is a really fat paper clip. <laughs> right? Okay. Hey, Danner, what? you think you could have given me a fatter paper clip? You got a skinnier one. I don't know. Well, Caleb zoomed in on these terminals. We can't show stuff in this giant paper clip in these terminals. I'm going to get crap from people that are like, we can't believe you stuffed that big giant paper clip in those terminals. <laughs> What is this? A makeshift jumper wire. Yeah. Here, is that small enough for Yes, that's better. Thank you, Joe. Another one too? Nope, just one's good. TE1 and E1. So the TE1 is the middle one. So it's, it's these two right here. I'll move my hand in a second. It's those two. And if we did this right, when I turn the key on, that check engine light should be flashing at me. One more. No, yeah, that's it. That was a code 12. Let's watch it again. One. One. Two. Code 12. One. One. Two. Just flashing code 12. Let's see if, if it does it the fourth time. If it does, that's it. That's all we got. One. One, two, yeah. So we did it right. Um, why don't you, while you're in there for me, Caleb, why don't you start that up? Um, just real quick, as far as those codes go and that, that code 12, without looking it up, uh, the code that we had in here previous was the EGR temperature sensor. And um, I would imagine that that's what that code is. I'm sure one of you guys are already looking it up as we speak. 94 Celica 1.8 code 12. Um, we can look that up too, but I'm not worried about that right now. Um, we're over here on this timing graph. So you see the 10, the zeros on the bottom, and 10's in the middle. When I put a timing light on there, we're gonna see another dot that's on the outside of the pulley that's gonna line up to that. Uh, you're not gonna see it with this light, but that's what this guy's for, right? We want, this is a, a variable timing light, so there's two ways to do this. Um, the, the dial right here is at zero, and what we can do is you can dial this to 10 and then set your mark down there to zero. That's one way to do it, or 
you just leave that at zero and set your mark to 10. And that's an, a variable light's an advantage when you can't see all of the marks, but you can see your zero point. If you can see your zero line and not your other ones, you can dial in what your timing, what you want it set for, and then set it to zero, which is really nice. You see we're just above zero. So we're like eight degrees probably retarded, okay? So let me get my tools. We're gonna loosen the distributor. You can just stay there, Caleb. Just below 10. Oh, oh we got a lot more, okay. I am what, about 12? Yeah. No, that's good. From my angle, it's is it like a fair more. Like, is it underneath? Okay, like got it, hand. yeah. I'm, I'm okay with the one degree too high, but that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Now the last thing's gonna be, I need to snug this down and then I need to recheck to make sure that mark didn't move. I have the lower one still loose, so we'll have to adjust that, but this will be the one that's holding it. And we check it again. Just a smidge above 10 degrees. Yep. And I'm good with that. And that, my friends, is why we don't set timing by sound. Some of you are saying, ah, you think otherwise, that's fine. If you wanna do it that way, go ahead. Me, I want a timing light to do it. All right, I need to, uh, I need to snug up this bottom bolt. I need to get a hose, this thing stinks. I'm killing you guys, aren't I? I am so sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Okay. Oh. Back's really hurting me today. A lot. It's a good thing I have this cushy job where I film and edit and all that stuff and don't wrench for a living anymore. I'm missing a disc in my back I my L5 S1 I have degenerative disc disease and it's completely gone I'm bone on bone on my back fell out of a tree when I was like 11 hurt my spine and then just the rest of my life of grinding it away playing ice hockey and wrenching you know is what it is so you roll with the punches right I'm blessed to be able to do what I'm doing and I'm blessed by you guys to allow me to do what I'm doing so I don't have to do this all the time. This, this is hard. Take our jumper out. Shut it off. Restart. Alright, so we just got to tighten up that power steering belt and we're done. I'll put this stuff back together. Guys, I hope you learned something from this. Um, our reasoning as far as what actually failed in the first place, weak coil was off, but we were on the right track with the progression of things. And I do believe that when the students put that thermostat in and they disturbed that distributor cap, uh, that's where all these symptoms came from. I'm sure that my son had some misfiring on occasion before due to that problem. Um, and I, I guess our last things, we'll look up the code 12 just to make sure that that's still that EGR temp sensor fault. But as far as this goes with our misfire, we are done. Ha <laughs> carbon monoxide. And uh, that was maybe our warning to shut this car down. Although we have exhaust fans on now and everything else. So thank you guys. I'll see you next time. I was just looking up the code 12. It says engine speed RPM sensor circuit. That's not good. Here, let's, uh, let's look this up legit. RPM signal. 
The integrated ignition assembly contains three pickup coils. See, I didn't see three, I only saw two. The G signal informs the ECM of the standard crank position. The NE signal informs the ECM of the crank position and engine speed. If the NE signal is not present to the ECM within two seconds or more, the engine cranking signal is not present. There is not three in this. That one, then I pulled it out and walked somewhere with it. Oh, that's... Are they considering that? Where's the third signal? I see two different circuits. That's the single one that got pulled in. All the wiring got pulled into the distributor shaft. There's your... Dub, there's your... Uh, basically your crank signal. This is your crank. This will be your cam. So they want you to do resistance checks. Check the air gap, resistance of each pickup coil. And that, you know, Jake's car, it stinks now. I don't remember it stinking before. Oh, that's lame. It really is, Caleb. Why did I have to know what light was on? We were done. And now we're not. Code 12, integrated assembly contains three pickup coils. It really doesn't. Oh, okay. Three pickup coils, but it's two signals. Hmm. So they're considering the one. Thank you, Joe. They're considering the one that has two. So I guess it maybe it would alter I'm not sure there's two coils there one coil there so maybe they're calling that there's only two signals though that's just odd the way they have it the NE signal informs the engine ECM of crank position and engine speed the G and NE why do they use these weird terminology this is why I replaced this thing in the first place, I think. Oh, cool. All right. So the G, this is the G pickup. Because it's got the single pulse, right? And then the NE pickup is this guy. Okay. Which has four. Oh, and it says it right on here, dumbass. On my, on my diagram that I printed up, I have G an any stupid we get to see a little bit more of this u-scope in action this kit's pretty sweet all right so it should be red and blue and six is red that's not right just these wire colors weren't weren't clear so I, I got a picture of the connector and uh, oh, okay they changed color on the other side that's weird so so I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, red here and it says six and I'm looking at that that's clearly not pin six but look at the harness side red on that side turns to green on this side so the colors on this side do not match it's these colors I need to go after all right, we're gonna use the back side though. I should be able to do the two outer ones. It should be red and blue, red and black. Yes, those two. I think L is blue on Toyota. So it's those two, these two, should be my NE signal. This should be my NE signal. We got some noise in that guy. Yeah, man, look at that noise. That's a better looking signal. That's my NE signal. Let me 
me adjust these scales. I move my zero line up it'd be nice to do that um, it's not important right now um, you see how nice how nice that waveform looks mm -hmm. you hold the rpm up a little bit all right that's pretty standard with this kind of waveform it frequency and amplitude will grow with rpm that's the four pulse signal that looks great let me go back to the other one same channel same settings there's your single pulse it's not surprising that the amplitude's lower to me, uh, but what I don't like is the noise in between that. Don't like the noise for sure. When I rev it, I can make that light go out. Hmm. Code 15 or code 12. And th that n noise that's in there. Oh shoot, we gotta put that housing back on. I, I don't think that that's, that's causing our electrical noise. Um, it might. This could be a, a factor. We thought we were done. We're not done. Remind me not to forget to put the intake air temp sensor back in the air cleaner housing too, because I did. Dropping the ball, Caleb. I wonder if I could put a capacitor in there in between those two leads and make that light stay off. Or it's very possible that uh, this shield that I left out could be contributing to that. So I don't know for sure, but the pickup that's giving me all the, all the noise is this one right here. Those, those two wires right there, the yellow uh, or green and then a white with a black or like yellow black are the same two wires that I'm connected to up here. So my point is there's no other filtering that I can do. If I can't make this code go away by putting this housing on and shielding that circuit, um, we're pretty much done. We're gonna have to probably put a distributor in this. But you can see where that, that cover might be important for that. And, uh, oh, I'm about to find out. I, I did change a capacitor inside. You guys watch me do that. But that capacitor is wired to the to the um, positive side uh, of the ignition coil. And, and you know what, that could be the issue. That capacitor is just junk. And then we're getting all this noise in this one circuit. But I'd think that that noise, if it was that, that noise would be through all of it, not just the one signal. I, I don't know for sure. I believe the capacitor in the distributor is more for radio noise than it is for electrical noise on like the pickup coil signals. That noise is still there. Damn it. Damn it, Caleb. My light's on too. And it goes away when I rev it. So if I had the other distributor, I'd want to put that capacitor in on the inside. Even though the wire's broken, we can fix the wire. Danner! 
You don't have any capacitors sitting around, do you? What? You have any capacitors sitting around? You know the flux capacitor. How did I know? I'm trying to think if I have any old distributors around. I don't think there's any adjustment. It did mention, uh, it did show some air gap adjustments, but I don't think there's an adjustment on that. Because the only other thing would be is that noise is being ignored and that signal's just too small of a signal at low speed to be seen and that's why the light comes on when I go down to idle speed. So I'm um, just looking up some info on this and looking at the waveform itself and how small it is. Um, there is an air gap adjustment check that they want you to do. Um, you know, you're putting a feeler's gauge in there between like the point, the, the, this would be the one I, wanna, I would wanna focus on, between the point of that and the pickup. Mm -hmm. And it should be um, eight to 16 thousandths of an inch. And uh, the problem with that though, is if it's not good NG, replace the distributor housing assembly. So there's no adjustment. I can't do anything with this. The fact that we have a, a, a distributor signal, uh, I, what was the definition of that? I didn't print that up. That air gap isn't right. Well, it sucks to be you. Yeah, pretty much if the air gap's off, you change the distributor, but the air gap is important for variable reluctance type sensors because if the air gap's too far away, then the signal's too small. And a closer air gap gives you a higher signal, yeah. so. But we don't have an adjustment for the air There gap. is no adjustment. If it's off, you replace the distributor. But it says if this code will set, if the NE signal is not present, which one's the NE? NE is the four, okay. Well, that one's good. If the NE is not present to the ECM within two seconds or more of the engine cranking, um, it'll set this code. Um, if the G signal is not present from the ECM for three seconds or more at the engine speed between 600 and 4,000 RPM, check for open or short in STA circuit. The STA circuit, why would they call that the STA circuit? It's the G signal. Yeah. I hate when they use different terminology. Inspection using an oscilloscope in 94. How freaking cool is that? STA. Where does that go? That's the freaking, oh, that's the starters. That, that's not the STA circuit. IGT, IGF. NE. G1. This is mislay. This has to be mislabeled. I just don't know why they're calling that the STA. I feel like that's a misprint. I wasn't supposed to be doing any damn troubleshooting, Danner. I got an R. Happens. Check for open or short in STA circuit. If G signal is not present for the ECM, check for a short to open in the STA circuit, and then they show you the diagnostic chart, check resistance of pickups, check for open or short in the harness and connector between ECM and what does that? That doesn't even say, what is that? And freaking <laughs> one, one A. Oh my goodness. This is what I'm talking about. You people have no idea how good you have it. This is all we're doing. I don't, I don't know where they're getting the STA reference. And I believe our, our problem is being caused by this, this guy right here with the noise that's in it. And if I had a capacitor, I could just dump a capacitor in there and see if we can get rid of that noise. I think I have one at home. We could do that. Um, I think we're done here. I think. Let me just look at one more thing. Yeah, it's like right on that threshold of where that that won't be seen. I mean, what I teach is 
um, essentially that anything less than 500 millivolt peak to peak is suspect. And as far as where we are, each of these blocks, this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, this is one volt per division I'm set on. That's a half a volt per division. Yeah, so we're over. I mean, that's, in my opinion, ignore the spikes, just look at the sine wave. That's at least one division right there. You're more, we're more than a half a volt, that should be fine. So in other words, what I'm getting at, there's no reason for me to go in there and try to adjust this air gap. Um, I, I think that these extra pulses in here are affecting uh, what the computer's seeing on this signal and um, I wanna try to get rid of them. And to get rid of them, I'm gonna try to put a capacitor in external first and, and then see if that works. I don't have any of my stuff here. We're gonna have to go back to my house and do that. Um, and then from there, if that doesn't work, it really, it needs a distributor. Uh, maybe we could try changing the capacitor inside, um, but yeah, my check engine light is on. And what do I do with that paper clip? Let's jump this again and make sure that's our only code is the code 12. The first flash, first flash is tens, the second flash is ones. And then we wanna make sure that some manufacturers will repeat the codes three times before they'll go to the next one. So I always make sure I wanna see it four times first. Yeah, so that's the only code we have. So that's current fault. Pretty cool seeing a little bit more of the U-scope though. I mean, this is, I'm not happy right now because this means I'm not done with this car. But uh, pretty nice, pretty nice kit for what you get for $399 or $400. So I'm pretty, pretty impressed with that. Um, yeah, we're gonna take this home and I'm gonna try just putting a capacitor in there. Let's see what it does. Thanks, Tanner. Right. Let me show you something about these pre OBD2 cars. So at idle, you see the lights on. Watch when I ra raise the RPM. Light goes out. Did you hear that? Mm hmm. I heard, that means we're probably low on coolant. Light came back on at idle. Now, on a, on a OBD2 car, if I shut the key off and restart the car, that light's still gonna be on. Pre-OBD2, see all the lights out? And then, wait for it. There, it's back on. That's a hard fault that's happening right now. You can't make that call on a pre on an OBD2 car. Just because you have a light on, you can't say, oh, hard fault, because it's happening right now because it's the current cycle. Yeah, this nice thing about pre-OBD2 cars, you can do that. Well, there's a couple things we can do with this. One, it runs and drives fine. Um, higher RPM, that light goes out, the computer likes what it's seeing with the RPM signals. And uh, it, it does have a stink to it though, doesn't it, Caleb? Um, I was just gonna say that we could just not worry about it, but um, this car has a little bit of an exhaust leak. And now that it's running like this, like real stinky, and we set off carbon monoxide detector warnings in the, in the garage running this thing, we need to fix that. We need to fix it. I was gonna say, screw it. We're getting rid of this car at the end of winter. We're legit getting rid of this car at the end, end of winter. So I don't wanna put any money into this, but I also don't wanna put my son's life at risk if he's sitting in traffic. Like I can smell it pretty bad right now. And I, I now remember why I changed this, this distributor in the first place. It was because of a, a code. Whew, it's 
It's bad. It's bad. So I think maybe what's happening because of how rich it smells, um, the computer is using the incorrect signals maybe for the injection timing. It's using like those spikes. I don't know. I have some capacitors. So we'll try a couple of these and see what to see what happens. Now someone smarter than me can uh, look at those oscillations and say this is your frequency and amplitude and here's the capacitor you want to use. That ain't me. I'm just going to try a few different ones and see what the signal looks like. Yeah, I can't. It takes the whole the whole sine wave away when I do it with that. Well, it was worth a shot. It was it was a good idea. Maybe. We got a couple other ones in here. Hey, look at that one. Can you tell me if the check engine light's off right now? Still on? Tell me if the light's off now. And that's with the... That's with the capacitor and then... I mean, I can definitely clean it up. Tell me if that check engine light's back on. Okay. The fact that that light is on right now with me filtering this signal and being nice and clean is telling me that this signal is just too weak to be seen at idle. And, uh, The noise is, is a byproduct, but I mean, doing anything with an internal uh, capacitor is not gonna help us. The only thing that I could maybe, maybe try to do is bend the pickup closer. Um, you know, the noise is just what it is. Noise, uh, let's get a before and after though. Before what? before I try to adjust the air gap. I don't know how to move my zero line up right now on this scope. I'm on a half a volt per division right now. And I wanna see what that looks like. Again, with this capacitor on here. Let's see if our sine wave. So we also drop the amplitude of that, don't we? Or is the amplitude of that the same? A little bit. Just a little bit. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ten minutes. Ten minutes. You know, if we weren't if we weren't filming, it would have been ten minutes. Because I would have just put a distributor in this a long time ago. As soon as I saw that copper wire, we would have been done. If this was a like a regular job, so you see that copper wire and that winding in there. Done, man. Put a freaking distributor in it. A loaded one. Comes with a coil and everything. We're going to go look at the old distributor to see if we can do any mo any mods to that. What I want to do is try to... Uh, look how close that air gap is. Like, you get any closer than that and it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit. So... Are there adjustments on this? I think the answer is no. Oh, there's a little bit of movement in that. We don't want it to hit. Oh, there is some some movement in that that we could we can absolutely there is movement there. 
So what I need to do, Caleb, I need you to help me. I need to turn the engine over and get that point lined up to that on our car. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm just going to bump the key and you're going to watch that, okay? I have the coil unplugged so we don't have power going to the ignition system so we won't have spark. Pass it. Again. Again. Again, real quick. Yes. Yeah? yeah how close? Uh, oh, yeah, but look, look how far, how much different that air gap is. Okay, we're not lined up either. I need to come back this way a little bit. And sometimes I'm man enough to turn the crank by hand by the alternator. Sometimes. Not this time. You sure? Ah, yeah. A little bit more. Is it moving? Yeah. Dude, look at that air gap. That's huge. That's a huge air gap. Compared to what we had on the other one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We're gonna fix this with an air gap adjustment. If I can get my screwdriver in here. All right, we weren't lined up all the way. So our air gap, I may have, not, I don't know if the camera showed it, but I may have misjudged like where exactly we were because we're not exactly lined up on that point. Look, there more. All right, remember the spec? Nope, what spec? It was like eight to sixteen thousandths. Oh uh, yeah, it was eight to sixteen. Was it? Yeah. You can tell I haven't used these in a while. There's eight. There's eight. We're gonna go eight. Is that okay? Gasket. No. All right. Let's see if that changed it. I, I feel like the air gap was, um, can't see the bolt holes. I was seeing maybe I'll see if there was a mark, but I. I said the air gap was really wide, but it wasn't quite lined up. And so I don't know how wide it actually was, but that's eight thousandths right there. Well, let's see what kind of amplitude we have on this signal now, huh? That's really what we're, what we're trying to do is, is increase the amplitude. And uh, air gap is critical on a VR type sensor, variable reluctance sensor. For you guys fo following along in my material, this would be chapter 21. Ignition system inputs where I cover this very thing, air gap issues with a variable reluctance type sensor. And uh, my hopes are that we really have an emphasis on that right now, or, or really able to show how much difference an air gap adjustment makes. So we had, you know, we have the before and and uh, before readings on the camera, and it was around a half a volt. Remember me saying that, Caleb? That it was around a half a volt for where our 
amplitude was. We're running out of daylight again. Oh. I forgot to plug the coil back in. Oh. Have an immediate check engine light. What the heck is that? I know. It's huge. Okay. Uh, let me. Make sure that we're good there. And... Oh my goodness. Look at the difference. Come here. Look at the difference. Wait. Like, I'm not even seeing the other half of it. That's a half a volt. I mean, it's, look, it's like Giant. 10 times as much amplitude. So why is my light on? My light's off. Yeah. Air gap. So then that noise becomes here. We're going to adjust some scales now. Just to have a little perspective in the edits right now, we're going to pull in as soon as Caleb gets focused. Got it. In the edits right now, before I adjust these scales, we were set at a half a volt. We were set at a half a volt. Look at the difference in the amplitude of this signal. I mean, it's it's night and day. It's night and day. It's, we're it's off day, the day. scale. Every, every um, one of these is a half a volt. We were barely making it past one square. Look where we are now. And so now this noise is gonna be a lot more insignificant because Watch what, what the settings do when I when I change. Sorry, I moved that. We're gonna get, there's one volt. And there's two volts. It's starting to look. Good. And so now it looks like a good signal, yeah. doesn't it? And you see the noise that's in there. Sure, each of those, if you think about the cam pulse, it's once per rotation. Uh, of the distributor that we have a pulse and so it's not surprising that we have four spikes in there because that's the ignition coil firing. It's completely normal, completely normal to have, um, well I don't want to say it's completely normal to have that noise but it's completely normal what's, where it's coming from is, is that ignition coil. But now that we have that high of an amplitude signal, I mean you're talking about uh, one volt per division so that's so that's two volts per division now. Let me hold that picture. And so that's two volts, four volts. That's almost a six volt peak to peak where we only had 500 millivolts before. What was our problem? It was an air gap issue. Surprising that I was able to adjust it. And uh, yeah, man, check engine light is off. Exhaust smells clean now too. Well, I hear my wife. Where is she? Come back here. <laughs> you smell the difference? Mm -hmm. Way better. Way better. Way better. Guess what we don't have to do, Caleb? Anything else. We don't have to buy a distributor. <laughs> and Or anything else. I mean, I, <laughs> that was a great lesson on uh on an air gap for a vrs that was unexpected and um pretty awesome i mean we could put a capacitor in there still if we wanted to clean up that noise but after seeing the amplitude of that signal uh, i'm fine with it smelling the exhaust now it smells clean I'm, I'm fine with this i'm not gonna worry about the noise i know some of you might be thinking about that capacitor that's in the distributor itself that's possible but that is on the, I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, that, um, this will be coil negative right here. And these two guys were over on positive. And so this is coil positive where that, this capacitor would be. And so what that does is that eliminates noise on the feed side of the circuit. And it really has nothing to do. It's not electrically connected in any way, shape or form with that 
pickup coil. And so I don't think I don't think swapping this out to see if the noise would get better is something that needs to be done. Night and day different on that signal. One more time, get a capture of that. And I'm gonna rev it and we're gonna watch the signal grow. Tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. how much those signals grow and if I knew how to use this scope better I'd re-zero that I see my zero line right there mm -hmm. we can move that to the center of the screen I am certain that I can but I'm not worried about it right now if you guys are interested in this badass tool you find a link for this on the tool page in the description of this video and uh, you know this this allowed me to um, really troubleshoot this with a paper clip and a little pocket scope really is what we did huh with this code 12 and again check engine light is off do you want to did you get a shot of the light not being on no check all right so here what, what i can do is i'll cycle the key stay there watch you see your check engine light mm -hmm. top right corner put your foot on the clutch so we start it See that check engine light is out. You can let go of the clutch. You snap throttle a couple times if you can reach it. Yeah. Sweet. So reminder, chapter 21, variable reluctance sensors. That's where you can learn about how to test these. You can see when I tested it, I went between the two wires because I wanted full amplitude. I got some uh, lectures on that. Really important when you're checking VR type sensors to connect properly to them. They make their own voltage. Chapter 21, make sure you check it out. Um, again, the scope, I'll put the link in the description of this video for the lab scope and um, yeah, we uh, thought we were going to do this in 10 minutes and turned out to be a, a decent project and a nice learning experience for all of us. And I just really like the last part of this where we were able to um, troubleshoot this with a little pocket lab scope and a paper clip reading codes. So pretty cool. I'm glad that Caleb got to see air gap issues too. That was his first time seeing that as well. Uh, so nice learning lesson for Caleb too. So guys, thank you so much for real. We are done this time. All right, so Caleb and I are outside um, having a beer and just talking about what we were doing with this car and why we were seeing the um, noise in this signal, so this top one. If you look at it, look where the ignition coil sits, literally inside right next to it. There is no way that you're gonna shield this ignition coil from all of those spikes. And so what Caleb and I believe is, and it was, this was his call, I think, is that the threshold of this sensor signal was raised above the noise level that was there. And that's why the half a volt wasn't able to be seen. Like I would say minimum half a volt, it should be able to be recognized. But I believe because of the noise there, um, they raised the threshold on this. I mean, I think it's a legit reason. There's definitely no way you're gonna shield that. That noise is gonna be there. And that is a good explanation for it, which is, Let's raise the threshold on what the computer's gonna see there. So props to Caleb for saying that. Thank you guys. We said we are done like three times now. Uh -huh. We're done for real this time.